In this tutorial, we will make a simple hand clap synthesizer. Before we start, let's look at the structure of the clap sound that we will build, and the logic of the synthesis. As with some other percussive synths, we start from white noise. We add two filters, one low pass, one high pass. This allows us to specify a certain frequency band that can be wide or narrow, high or low. We then add the distinctive clap volume envelope. This is really multiple envelopes that are triggered very close together but not at the same time, producing a sawtooth-like envelope as shown here. The noise and the filtering are quite simple and pure data. We set up a standard high pass filter and a standard low pass filter with HIP and LOP objects. Rather than directly specify the cutoff frequencies of both, we specify the high pass cutoff and then the width of the two filters, meaning how far above the first cutoff that the low pass cutoff is set to. This just involves adding a fixed value to the cutoff value. The dbf object is the trigger object. In this context it makes sure that the add object is triggered by both the cutoff number box and the width number box. The crucial part of the clap sound is the volume envelope. We will create a sub patch for this with an inlet and an audio outlet. Inside this sub patch, we will create multiple volume envelopes. Individually, these are relatively simple, particularly if you have been following the other really useful drum synth tutorials. We have a V line object controlled with a message. The volume goes very, very quickly to 1, then decays to 0 in a specified time. We square the output twice, so that we get a steep decay curve. We add an inlet to control the decay time. To make the distinctive clap sound, we create multiple versions of this envelope and stagger the triggering of each one with the delay object. This gives us a cascading chain of envelope triggers. We add an inlet that controls both the delay time between each trigger and the decay time of each of these envelopes. The final envelope is treated differently. We scale the decay time by number so that the final envelope tail is longer than the others. We also add an inlet to control this decay time separately. The delay and the decay times are useful parameters for tweaking the clap sound.
this is our whole clap sound now. We can package it up into a sub patch and add the controls as sliders as we have done in previous tutorials. What is missing here are controls for the filters, the cutoff and the width. We name the sliders so that we can set up preset messages for quickly recalling particular settings. You may notice that the cutoff slider is not actually changing here. That's because I've messed up actually setting the receive name in the slider properties box.